Campbell. And here in my shed with all this paraphernalia, I'm going to recreate the experiments which change the world. This radioactive stuff shaped 20th century science. This radium gave us everything from the atomic bomb to understanding the structure of matter. It emerged from a great pile of dirt, and I went on a journey to find out how. A silhouette. Isolate the active element. This is the story of radium and the woman who discovered it, Marie Curie. My journey begins on a train destined for Paris, the city that Marie traveled to in October 1891. She was leaving Poland and her old life behind her. From a young age, she'd had an overwhelming desire to study science. But in Poland, women weren't allowed to go to university. Undeterred, Marie scrimped and saved for eight years to get to Paris, the land of liberty, where university doors would be open to her. That day now rushed towards her. Mary arrived in France at a time when Paris was the city of innovation. She was a misfit, both a foreigner and a woman in a man's world. Here at the Sorbonne, she studied science. She was one of just a handful of women. For the next two years, Mary worked hard, very hard indeed. She was a foreigner and she was a woman surrounded by French-speaking people. I think in the classroom she was probably very, very much treated cordially by the young Frenchman. It would be more in the street that she might be treated differently. Yeah, Marie, having very little money, lived mainly on bread and butter every little once in a long while. She had an egg, an earth, and cherries have been recorded, and also radishes. Come here, monsieur. Yeah. She fainted one time, she fainted one time in a lecture, and they said, what have you eaten? And they really pressed her on the point, and it turned out, over three days, that's all she'd eaten, a bunch of radishes. Missy. She was so focused on this opportunity to be a student, and that was so much the center of things for her that I think the poverty didn't matter at all. In fact, she talked, she described later that this period as a period in which she felt a precious sense of liberty. Mary's hunger for knowledge paid off, and she graduated from the Sorbonne with top marks. She planned to go home to Poland and become a science teacher, but this never happened, because that spring, she fell in love. Through um, a Polish acquaintance, she was introduced to Pierre Curie. And she describes um, seeing him that very first time. She uh, clearly was struck by him, um, attracted to him. He was a quiet, thoughtful, shy kind of person. And very quickly, they formed a strong attachment. Before meeting Mary, Pierre had given up on love. He was a promising scientist and thought that romance would interfere with his work. I met Marie's granddaughter, Hélène Langevin Joliot. She described to me the impression that her grandmother made on Pierre. I'm sure that uh, probably two or three days after the first meeting, Pierre was convinced he wished to marry her. Right, right. <laughs> In spite of the fact that when he was young, yes. he has written, women with genius are rare. Right. Yes. Yes. And he found one. <laughs> found he one. Right. He found one. <laughs> right. Pierre begged Marie to stay in Paris and marry him. After a year of persuasion, she gave in. Soon they would embark on a scientific life together.
whilst the Curies were enjoying married life, scientists were pondering the meaning of matter. They had thought that pure substances known as elements only produced one kind of energy. For centuries, the thinking had been this, that you can only get energy out of an element if you combine it with another element in a chemical reaction. This here's a strip of magnesium, an element. I kick-started in the flame there, and there we are. We got the magnesium combining with the oxygen in the air, giving us all this energy, all this heat and light. But this idea was about to change. The world was about to come upon a new kind of energy, discovered by scientist Henri Becquerel. Here's what Henri Becquerel found in 1896. He takes a photographic plate, places it on thick black paper, wraps up plate, takes a small lump of phosphorescent substance containing uranium, puts it on top of black paper, leaves it some hours, removes phosphorescent substance, unwraps plate, develops plate, and then he finds on the developed plate, he's got a silhouette of that substance, a silhouette of deep intensity. Something must be in that phosphorescent substance which is capable of getting through the black paper and onto the plate. Becquerel showed that uranium emitted a new kind of energy. No one knew what it was. Around the time of Becquerel's discovery, Marie Curie was looking for a doctoral thesis. She was intrigued by Becquerel's surprising find and wanted to know if other substances gave off a strange radiance like uranium. Choosing this as her thesis was the most important decision of her life. She knew that Becquerel's rays made the air conduct electricity. So she used an instrument, a primitive version of my Geiger counter, to detect this electrical activity. She tested hundreds of different substances. Within months came a dramatic revelation. A mined, coal-like substance called pitch blend gave off far more energy than uranium. Marie was puzzled. She knew that pitch blend was mostly made of well-known substances which didn't give off any energy at all. So from this she had to conclude that there was some other element in pitch blend, some great unknown element there.